Welcome to the Quicker Sim CFD Toolbox for MATLAB tutorial number 11. In this tutorial we will show you how to perform an unsteady simulation of wicking process of a porous medium. This is already a pretty advanced tutorial. It is strongly recommended that you go through the tutorial number 4 on porous media flows to get some background. Okay, first like you need to get the impression on a sheet. The whole tutorial is based on a model presented in the following work. Numerical simulation of liquid absorption paper like swell swelling porous media. You can find it here. Let me describe the model first. What we are dealing with is a kind of a porous medium which has the contact with water at initially at the very bottom, and uh, the water in porous medium is given as the liquid fraction phi. So at the very beginning, phi is 1 at the bottom and it's completely dry. Phi, we could see 0 inside. And once water enters the medium, phi grows from 0 to 1 on the interface and moves into the fluid. Obviously, in such a porous medium, the flow is governed by the Darcy's law. So velocity is proportional to the gradient of pressure. Darcy law can be modified using divergence to uh, actually a diffusion problem for pressure, as you can see here. And K is the permeability constant. And in our case, K will depend on the liquid fraction itself. So capital K is some basic level of permeability and alpha is the multiplying factor. So this formula tells you that the dry zone has really large permeability, so practically there is no resistance to the flow while when the flow when the space becomes wet the permeability drops to phi times k so the physics is the following water enters the porous medium permeability drops and the liquid fraction increases so the liquid fraction front moves and the motion of this liquid fraction is governed by this equation and once it moves, it changes the permeability itself. Regarding the boundary conditions that we use in the flow, we will be solving the, actually the problem for pressure. So pressure will be zero at the bottom and pressure will be equal to minus Pc, which is simply capillary pressure. It's given on the top while actually this boundary condition should refer to the liquid front. But by using this trick with extremely large value of permeability in the dry zone, what we actually get is that pressure is almost constant in the dry zone. In this way, we do not need to track the wet front to prescribe PC over there. PC itself is only uh, actually a material property. It's defined by a few constants and you, if you look at the proper definition, those are all constant values. Okay, so let's discuss the code. So, as usual, first we import the geometry. We move a little bit five meters upwards. We define the field's hydrostatic pressure it's going to be corrected by rho gh with respect to our p phi the liquid fraction and there is also a definition of as a variable that's called the residence time that's given by the integral that means how long the element of fluid element of geometry is wet it's useful later on we define the time stepping, number of time steps for purpose of this simulation is just very small. You can run it later on more. We initialize phi with zeros except one at the bottom edge. We define the physical properties. So that's water, that's G, surface tension, contact angle, capillary pressure, just go to PC definition. Some basic porous zone permeability and this multiplier for the dry zone permeability. We also initialize the movie because we will want to record the results. We pre-compute the number of nodes and assemble the mass matrix for the transient advection problem. Okay, let's execute the code before going into the main loop. Here goes our mesh. And let's continue discussing that. So, that's the main iterative loop, time stepping, display time step, 
we compute the permeability, insert it for diffusion matrix for solving Darcy's law, impose the boundary conditions zero at the bottom and minus capillary pressure at the top, solve the system in one shot, compute the velocity by simply calculating the gradient of pressure and multiplying it by the permeability. Also, we need to insert an extra correction for velocity field from the fact that we haven't taken into account the gravity. Once we have the velocity field, we can assemble the scalar convection matrix for equations of phi. We add mass matrix over there, compute extra variables, impose the scalar boundary condition of phi at the bottom, and solve the problem for phi. Also, if the solutions are not accurate enough, we define a simple limiter. So simply if phi is larger than one, we cut it to one. If it's less than zero, we cut it to zero. We also update this residence time for the wet zones and display the solution and save it to the movie. After that, we simply close the movie and we can also visualize the results at the end of the simulation. Okay, so let's run the rest of the code. We display phi at every time step. It goes pretty fast. Yes, since we did only 10 time steps for our simulation, it went very fast. So you can see how our residence time looks in the fluid. So there is much wet residence time at the bottom. The pressure field is the following. So it drops from zero to value of minus PC at the front. And you can see that the drop is much more significant in this zone than in this one. Okay. In order to visualize the whole simulation, we prepared a longer movie in advance. It consisted of like 400 time steps. Let's just have a look at how it works. So you can see that fluid enters the medium pretty fast, but then it slows down simply because the more and more volume of the porous medium becomes wet, so the drag increases, so the flow gets slower and slower. And at the same time, it is more tilted to the right because like there is smaller path to the outflow here. Okay, so that's all that we prepared for this tutorial. We hope that you enjoyed that. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, visit our quickersim.com website and see you next time.